Good morning, y'all. It's Sunday morning. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Uh, it's just going to be a fabulous one. Um, I'm Rachel. I'm gardening for butterflies and for myself on the Alabama Gulf, Gulf Coast in Zone 9A. And um, I'm so sorry about the sound from last week. That was icky. Look, I've got this thing. It's attached to my phone, and I'm holding it super close to my mouth. Um, I Sometimes I have it pinned on my um collar and sometimes I guess maybe when I turn my head it it just doesn't do well and then sometimes I'm out in the garden and I don't have it at all and I just try to talk as close to my phone as I can but I'm hoping the sound will be better today but um oh my gosh we've been having so many adventures um today is May 12th and um I'm in Orange Beach Alabama um in zone 9a um it's 69 degrees here uh, I went back to Petals from the Past. I took my mom and my mother-in-law, and y'all, we had so much fun out there. I mean, if you've got a gardening mom you, and you're anywhere near Petals from the Past, you need to take her there. And what was so cool is they did like a um, Mother's Day brunch. And so we got to have brunch, and then we got to shop. And uh, for me, I felt so giddy and so excited while I was there. It was like go into Six Flags. I, I just, I remember how I felt the first time I went there, and, and that's how I felt that way again. But um, y'all come along with me. I'm going to show you the goodies that I got there, and the butterflies that I released this week, and just how the garden has grown. So um, I just can't wait to show you. Let's, let's see it. <laughs> I am so thankful that we've had several really good rains. We desperately needed it. Um, and the uh, garden is definitely responding to having real rain rather than sad sprinkler rain. Um, but I'm going to show you the stuff that I got at Petals from the Past yesterday. I am on a silver gray kick these days. And I found some darling things that I've never grown before. So I'm super excited about them. This is an... Uh, it's germander, and I think it's going to have a purple flower to it. It's called germander silver, but look at the silvery gorgeousness of that. Um, I've never grown it before, and I don't even know if I've ever seen it in a garden. I, maybe I've seen it in a magazine, but here is giant cat mint, and um, Six Hills giant cat mint, and it's... Uh, I don't know if you call it Nepeta or Nepeta. I've heard it both ways, but I've wanted um, some for a long time. I'm hoping that I can grow it, and uh, I've seen it just looking so beautiful in, in magazines, and I don't know if I've ever even seen that in person in somebody's garden, but so I'm hoping, oh, I can do it. And this gray Santalina, just look at that. Beautiful. Got two of those, and I'm wondering if this is the thing that has those little yellow balls for a flower. I should have looked it up before I even started videoing, but I didn't. Yes, that's going to have those yellow balls, and they call it um, cotton lavender, but um, oh, I just, I'm excited about growing that. I hope I can grow it here, and then some woolly thyme. Isn't it just the cutest? I'm going to um, plant that between some um, rocks, and then this thing is a new thing, and I wish that you could see how sparkly it is. I don't think it's really coming through, but yesterday in the sunshine, it looked like it was actually dusted with glitter, and it's called Majulin tea, mm. um, and it's supposed to be very flavorful, uh, but I, I read the actual tag at the, at the store, so there will be more information about that. And then this Vinca Mediterranean peach. There were only two of them, but don't you love the chartreuse kind of leaves? And and it's a very different kind of pattern on the flower. Oh, yeah. And then I found this pink penstemon. And I got to tell you all, the bees were all over it. Look at that. They call it beard tongue. Let's see. Does it beard tongue? Let's see. Can you see that? It doesn't really look like a beard to me. But it's just so precious, and it's a perennial. And, um, yeah, and I've got to show you all my Gulf Coast penstemon that I'm growing from seed because it's growing really well. But I just thought, wow, pink. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited. I've got to refresh the, the plants in the front of the 
uh, flower bed. And then this has got buds all over it. And I had to look up a picture of it to see what it would look like. Because I was like, I mean, do I want to buy this? I don't know if I'm going to like it. It is Honey Song Pink Aster. Um, and I got two of them because I want to put them, I want to refresh the kind of stuff in front of the um, rose arbor. And then I've been seeing Confederate jasmine growing so densely all over fences, all over Orange Beach. And I was just like, why have I not grown that on my fences? I mean, it's, it's so thick you can't see through it. So I got that and it smells incredible. And I think one of the reasons why I didn't is because I don't think it's native. And I, I was wanting to do native stuff. But you know what? Um, now I'm just desperate and I want to cover my fences with something. And that's going to do it. Before I even go into the garden, I was going to show you where I planted my um, my blackberry bush. Uh, well, I don't know if it's, I hope it's not a bush. I hope it's a vine. But um, And I want it to cover this fence right here. I've got to weed a little bit more, but all my cattle panel fences, I want them to be covered in greenery. Just when I thought that the Desdemona rose and all the other roses had gone kaput, it puts out a couple more roses, and I've got some more buds coming up. And uh, so I'm really, really surprised by that. And don't you love, like, the red coloring of the new growth on rose bushes? That really adds some interest. So I've got this over here. And I cut back the salvia so that I can actually walk through the tr uh, orange, uh, the, the orange, the rose arbor. As usual, I think I need way more pink out front. There's just not enough pink. I need stuff to stand out. But I was going to show you, I bought um, that little, I can't remember if it was called honey or sugar or what, but it's a, it's a, um, ugh. let's see if you can see it. It's starting to bloom all the way in the back there. Budlia. And I didn't know whether it was going to make it. I might have to pull it out more. But last year, I was just entranced with it. And it hasn't ever been as pretty as it was when I first bought it. I saw it at Walmart last year. I'm doing, I did an experiment with its sister plant that Budlia um, and I think I guess it's a smaller one I cut it all the way back and it is growing back I have it in a pot over here I'm gonna have to show it to you but thankfully I can walk through here without having to move the salvia and look the clematis is blooming and looking gorgeous and climbing it's so happy I've got to remember that I do love these hydrangeas. Every year I want to yank them out because they get scraggly and I really should trim them back because they're looking a little kind of Dr. Seuss like with some of these goofy things hang sticking up but isn't that lovely? Isn't that just so pretty? Yeah I have to stop right here and just talk about the frog fruit. Y'all I hope that y'all can get some because it's just so dainty and sweet and it looks so fairy tale like through here with all these little white flowers popping up and it's a bonus you get a larval host plant out of it but it's a ground cover it's native it wants to live it's so fun everybody loves it get you some I'm sure you can get some at uh, Petals from the Past. I didn't look for it, but they've got a ton of native plants. And y'all, I, I have to apologize. I just flitted around like a butterfly when I was there. I was so excited. I was just going from one plant to the next. And I didn't do it justice. I did not. But um, y'all, you have to go. You just have to go there. But look at this. The Agastash is blooming. It's so beautiful. All that purple. And I got to tell you, the honeybees love it so much. Um, and then also the Cleom is blooming and it's going to get huge. I can't, this uh, area cannot sustain all that Cleom. It just can't. So I'm going to have to move it around. It looks like out of all the Cleom that I started from seed, I have a light pink one and a purple one. And the rest of them are kind of like a dark pink. Um, but they are beautiful and look at this the sunflower is about six feet tall now 
Gumfrina are just now starting to pop out and the coneflower I think this is the best coneflower to start from seed it's like I think it's a native one and it it really wants to live um, but when the gumfrina pops out my dreams of my pink lollipop garden are gonna start to come into fruition and I'm gonna have to move this stuff because it is it's too crowded it's, it's nobody nobody has enough space to do anything now so we have to move things out and give them more uh, space I might even have to move into the front garden but you know what's so cool about that Cleome I can move that into this um, into like the back area of this border and have that color that I wanted to have um, tall tall color right there where in the center there's that dahlia that's starting to peel out and even though this arrow leaf salvia does get huge it's big like look at it it's and see how man I think that's probably like four feet wide but just the blue of that flower is so intense and everybody loves it yeah gorgeous something that I'm just really enjoying because I feel like it brings a little bit of I'm not really sure it kind of brings the tone down it's like let's bring the room down a little bit is this millet you know that dark burgundy kind of cuts the sweetness of all this color I had to back it up a little bit and show you that the um, little brick path is kind of not even really much help anymore since the plants have grown over it but um, <laughs> it is so much fun Oh, get a load of this verbascum. Let me zoom in so you can see it. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, I think I've got, I'm going to have um, random colors. I think it was a variety of colors. So it's going to be like, I'm going to have some pinks and some purples and maybe some pale pinks and some whites. But isn't that cool? So here it is up close. And there's another one. I didn't even expect there to be more than one little stalk on each plant. I hope you can hear the incessant hum of the bees. They are so happily working in this, in this garden. Oh, I've got something else that I started from seed that recently bloomed. I've never been able to grow snapdragon from seed. And I guess it's because I was just never didn't have enough patience. I was just throwing it. So I got to show it to you. But first, a stop at Sweet Natalie Dahlia. So pretty. I did not stake it, and it's fallen over. Uh, but so lovely. This is called Apple Blossom Snapdragon. Isn't that just the sweetest little, palest little color? There. And then the little buds that aren't open yet just look like little ballet slippers. So pretty going to do a little comparison against the Cleome that is in the ground and it looks kind of pale and sad and then I've got a Cleome over here that I've got in a pot and just look how much darker it is I'm talking about the leaves not really the the flowers but wow the difference um and I thought I had put this in a spot um now before I realized that I couldn't plant in the ground out here because armadillos were going to dig everything up I brought in of course, it was a couple of years ago, maybe two or three years ago, I brought in a ton of compost and piled it up and just made kind of like um, flower beds that were like raised up off the ground. I mean, not raised up off the ground, but, you know, about a foot or two off the ground with pretty dirt. And uh, but it's it doesn't have the nutrition that the other one has in the really good potting soil because somebody was asking why I uh, gardened in containers and they wanted to know what the soil was like here and you know what the soil is like here it's really just it's brown sand I mean it's it's not it's not full of nutrition I can tell you that so if you do garden here in Orange Beach you do have to amend the soil but you know what I mean most people if you garden you're going to do that anyway you're going to add compost you're going to uh, make sure that your soil is um, full of nutrients because every time you grow stuff, you know, it's, it's sucking that out of it. 
I'm still waiting, but not so patiently, for my Zabrina hollyhocks to bloom. And I was going to give you a, this one is the one in the ground, and I had planted two verbascum on either side of them. I should have gone in here, because I saw that something was eating them last week, and I didn't look. But last night I looked, and army worm caterpillars have decimated the uh, verbascum, just decimated them. Army worm caterpillars also decimated this sweet potato vine. And I got to tell you, I cannot be live and let live about these things. When you turn over one of these leaves, there's like 30 little caterpillars on it. And just imagine they could just completely eat your garden down to nothing. So I squished as many as I found. What I usually hope that will happen with army worm caterpillars is that all of its their predators like the wasps and birds will come and eat them and feed them to their babies and all that but um they just weren't doing it fast enough in the bog garden skullcap has taken center stage look at how phenomenally beautiful that is i, I i've never had it growing so thickly and so lush but I recommend it. It's, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I don't want to ever forget it. And everything else seems to be doing really well. The pitcher plant, this one right here, is growing tall and luscious. It looks like the Venus flytrap is okay, even though it has bloomed and set seed. And I've got a little, I think that's a pincushion thing right there. Now, I had some big ones of those, and then they died out. So I'm really glad to have that one there. It looks like I've got two of them. And then here are the seeds. That's the seeds right there for Venus flytrap. I wonder if you can, I mean, I'm sure you can plant them and have more. Okay, those are Venus flytrap seeds. Those little tiny, tiny little teardrop shaped things. So I'm going to sprinkle them in here and see what happens. I think this is a darling ladybug. Um, I'm hoping it is. Linda, I'm sorry to say that this pitcher plant that's right here that was eating a bug last week is not one of the ones that you sent me. Um, I think I killed those, and I'm so sorry. I planted all the ones that you sent me right here in the front of the bog garden, and um, they haven't come back up, and um, I, uh, I did them a kill. Oh, talking about killing things. Um, yes, I have to admit, uh, I have killed everything, one of everything that I've ever, ever grown, you know, and um, something that I think held me back from gardening was the fear of failure, but you know what, I, I don't know how often I say this, but I have to tell people, look, you can't be afraid of killing stuff, and you can't be afraid of uh, making mistakes, and you can't be afraid of failing as a gardener. You have got to um, get over that, <laughs> and uh, you've got to um, embrace, embrace the chaos. <laughs> so yeah, don't be afraid of making mistakes when you're gardening. Everybody does. Every, every gardener tries and fails, but, um, you, you won't know what you can do until you do try. I had been planning on waiting to cut back Sweet Spirit until, uh, a better time but it was so scraggly and so I cut it back to about two feet tall and look at how beautifully she's coming back she oh it's just y'all roses are really really resilient and so are seedlings seedlings are resilient because these poor babies have been stuck in these tiny pots for a long time and I'm going to get on it um, and I'm so thankful I'm getting to meet a friend um, tomorrow afternoon and we're gonna have a little plant swap that's so fun <gasps> hey Anne Marie um, but uh, that's uh, I'm, she's gonna get um, one or two of all of these goodies and and that way we can spread the love and also um, just everyone can be happy and Everybody can maybe live a longer life somewhere else. Even Big Mama is making a comeback because she has looked sad and she's had problems. It's not her fault. Uh, things have been attacking her. But look, Big Mama is a gorgeous rose. She doesn't have a good scent, but she is so lovely. 
these are the little flowers on globe basil. I'm kind of surprised that this one is blooming as soon as it is because um, I guess it was just like, well, this is all I'm going to have for the rest of my life because it's in this pot. It needs to be in a bigger pot. But the bees love it. Really do. And I think um, if I had been diligent and if I had cut off the spent blooms last year, I could have had it live longer. So I'm hoping I'll have an opportunity to do that this year. The arrowwood viburnum is covered in blooms. Look at that. So it's about to burst. It's so pretty and it's grown tall. I'm going to need a few more of those. I really like the shape of it and the stems and the buds on it and just the color of the leaves. That is a lovely, lovely native shrub. I think I'm going to plant one of the Confederate jasmine over here to grow on this fence because uh, to give uh, my neighbor and me some privacy and we've got this um, little salvia kind of hedge growing right here. It needs to be mulched but we, we want to have more more of a not a super barrier but like more privacy right here. Look at these salvia lucantha. Salvia Amistad and uh, Salvia Indigo Spires, all three together. That's so pretty. I love doing little experiments. And what I have done right here is I um, planted that spicy globe basil. And then I put my little seedlings in those pots that were from Proven Winners that are supposed to be like fertilizer. And they're supposed to break up in the ground. And so I planted them in the ground right here. Um, and I hope it will help them to not get dug up by the armadillos. Maybe it'll protect them and also keep them fed and watered and they will flourish. We will see. I can't remember if I already showed y'all that I had moved the bird bath over here, but I saw a little squirrel drinking out of it. I mean, it's been so dry and thank God that he sent the rain. I was just so, I woke up in the middle of the night and heard a strange sound and it was rain. And I just thanked God for answering my prayers. But look at this lavender right here. I got to show y'all what it is. I refuse to memorize this name until this lavender actually does, actually do really well. So Aromatico Blue, Blue Improved Lavender is the name of it. I had it last year. It lived through the winter. I've got to weed this little pot. But look, it doesn't look like it's super happy. It's yellowing in the center. But man, I wanted lavender so badly. And if this one can do it, then yay. Um, because I have killed every kind of lavender every year that I've ever had it. Um, they just, I don't think they like the humidity down here. The whole front bed has got a ton of gross, not good kind, not the Grandpa Ott, but the gross kind of um, morning glory. You can see right here. That in the center is morning glory. Now, the other part is passion flower vine and I want that like here it is growing oh look it's going to grow around the um bird bath oh that would be so pretty thank god for the rain though because I have not really done any kind of watering here I've just weeded a little bit I've got a bunch of things here that I want to live so many um seeds that I threw out of little zinnias that are popping up and then this Mexican sunflower that I want to grow into a forest but I planted out some trees out here the ones that I got from David the Good um, if y'all have not seen him you should look him up he's on YouTube and he's got some incredible things the hydrangeas are looking gorgeous and um, I planted caladiums in between them a couple of years ago and there's one coming up and I don't know if any more of them are going to come up but I have a lot of ideas for this bed right here and I want to plan it out so that it looks pretty from the porch because that's where I sit and where I look at it so it's going to not really translate well looking at it from this direction but um that right there that that is Duranta that's coming back from last year it had been five feet tall froze to the ground it didn't like the freeze and now it's coming back and looking so pretty so I hope I can remember to protect that next year when it freezes and this salvia is coming back from last year amazing it needs to be trimmed back 
this bed had been full of really pretty ferns and it, they all froze to the ground so this has got to got to be refreshed it's icky I planted the mulberry tree next to the pomegranate tree here's the darling little elderberry and then over here I've got my sweet bay magnolia it's it's gonna be if the deer will leave these things alone, then hopefully they will grow. And then I've got my little pawpaw tree. It just looks like a little stick. But, um, and I've killed pawpaw trees before. So let's see what happens with this one. Look how gorgeous and full this beauty berry bush is. Now this, I did not plant. I wanted a blueberry, a blue beauty berry bush. But um, the deer or the birds or the squirrels planted this in my yard for me and I am it could not have grown this nice if I had planted it myself <laughs> then right next to the beautyberry bush a confederate rose started growing that I did not plant and I, I trimmed it back a little bit because some of the stuff had died off on it from the freeze but that is I love it when I don't have to do anything when things just show up I think I might have thrown out some seeds for this, but this is ageratum or mist flower, um, and it just showed up too. Now, some deer came along and ate the tops off of these, you can see right there. But look, I still have one sweet little flower. I wish the color would show up for you better than that, because it's, it's much more purpley. That's looking kind of pale and pink, but it's a, a very pretty purple. All over the front yard, I have my milkweed making a comeback. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing the monarchs. I haven't seen any in um, in months, but that is okay. I need I need to get a huge store of monarch uh, milkweed for them first. I'm gonna have to make this area a little more presentable than it was last year because I'm having a little party here for my friend Carly for her new baby. Um, and, uh, and I don't want it to look a mess when everybody shows up. So, so this hopefully will be transformed into something that's worth looking at um, by June. <laughs> I just remembered that I said I was going to show you all that other Budlia. It's called Honey Baby or Sweet Baby or Little Baby Budlia. But this is the one that I cut all the way back. And it's making a comeback. It, it looks way better than that other one, even though that other one's got buds on it. But it looks way healthier. That other one got so scraggly and sad. So I'm hoping that this one will bloom. Isn't that Agastache just gorgeous? Just so gorgeous. I love it combined with, with this right here. With that um, uh, Coral Nymph Salvia. I just I adore that. I got to do some rearranging right here. Because I want to be able to see that a little better. Also, that poor verbena down there has got to have some space. So everything's got to be pulled out a little bit, give everybody a little bit more breathing room, growing room. Here's something that I've been waiting and waiting for it to bloom. It looks like it's going to be possibly Ami. Um, I don't know. But that's going to be a fun adventure to uh, see what it is next week. I think I planted some Ami seeds in some pots. And uh, so, yeah, let's see what it's going to be. The honeybees are going to town on the Agastache. They adore it. They adore Agastache. And I adore Agastache, too. We just had a few more little sprinkles of rain. And whenever it rains, I always think, about um, when Jesus said that God sends rain on the just and the unjust and I love that so much because it makes me thankful that God cares about everyone and he's working in everybody's life and uh, it gives me such peace I don't have to be anxious because I know that God is working in everybody's life that I'm around and in the world and uh, I know that he's handling things and he's working everything for the good of those who love him and are called according to their purpose. Oh, well, his purpose. That's right. <laughs> Don't ever discount the value of teeny tiny flowers. 
because the honeybees love this. This is Mexican heather, and it's got tiny flowers on it, and it's just lovely. And uh, I wish there was a honeybee on it right now so I could prove my point, but they're too busy on the agastache. The ag apparently, they do play favorites because they are just loving it. But you know what? They know that the agastache has got a short duration, and I think the um, Mexican heather is around all the time. So that's, they, you know, they understand. They know when time is of the essence. Oh, look. Somebody's enjoying the eggplant, the patio baby eggplant, little, little um, lizard. And I read something really cool about lizards, um, and I, I don't know if you pronounce it anole. That's how I've pr pronounced it, or it's anole. But these lizards, they have a, a radius. Um, their territory is 12 by 12 by 12, which means I don't have a lot of space for male um lizards I, I don't even know how big my garden is I could probably have like maybe six male lizards in this space but the thing is they they have female lizards they they allow like up to five to six female lizards to live in their territory so and they call it a harem as as much as I dislike to use that word but um so that that is what they they be doing here I've got to show you close up the devastation of army worms. Um, now, if you see something like this, you're going to turn the leaf over, and there are going to be teeny tiny little caterpillars, and they're going to kind of like fall from strings to the ground to try to escape your smushing them. And there will be, oh, I get countless numbers of teeny tiny ones turning your leaves into lace. That is not a pretty thing. This is my hollyhock, y'all. I mean, you, and then this one, I got I panicked, and I just totally took it off of the plant and smushed everything on it. But, um, and now I don't even have an example of a caterpillar, but let me tell you, they're ugly. They are black with, like, a, maybe a little white stripe down them. But you can't tolerate um, army worms in your garden, or they will do this. They will just turn everything into um, a skeleton. That's why you want to keep the predators of army worms around, which are um, wasps. Wasps will eat army worms. And there are several different kinds of wasps that are always going around hunting. If you see them on leaves and they're crawling up under leaves and they're buzzing all around looking, that's what they're looking for. But I just don't have enough wasps uh, to eat them all. So I have to smush the ones that I find. Sunday must be the time for releasing butterflies. This one, oh, it's ready to leave. It's, oh, okay. Well, it's not ready exactly yet, but um, it jumped out of the cage and it, now it's gonna crawl its way around until it's ready to fly. Now, this is one of my Eastern Black Swallowtails and I hope that it will do well. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see it. There he goes, over. The garage oh no back over here way high hopefully it'll come back to the garden um, I've been seeing the couple of ones that I let out uh, last uh, Sunday and they've been coming back so it's funny because I said oh they never come back and then they did I don't have Gulf fritillary butterflies yet but I still have uh, Gulf fritillary uh, chrysalises hanging around in many places around the garden. So I'm hoping that these are viable and that when I have enough, uh-oh, there's a bug on that. I hope that doesn't, that looks like an ant. But anyway, I hope that when they are viable and ready to come out, that I'll have plenty of passion flying for them. It's Tuesday, May 7th, and the clematis has opened up. Isn't it lovely? Something else that's really beautiful about this variety is look at the edges of the leaves. They've got kind of a burgundy edging to them. And don't they look just so gorgeous shining in the sun? I'm so thankful to have this. This is exciting, y'all. We're finally going to see this Cleone bloom. And isn't it weird the way uh, right before they open up, they, they have those little loops on them. It's so cool. This one looks like it's going to be kind of like a hot pink color. You can see that I have way more Cleome than this area really actually can hold. 
So once they start flowering and getting really crazy big, I'm going to move them into other sections of the garden because um, they get massive. They, they, can, they can get tall and wide, like four, maybe even five feet tall, and, um, and they'll start to kind of spread out uh, too. So it's going to be neat. And look at all the future flowers on this cone flower. This started from seed, um, I'm not sure if it was last year or the year before, and, um, and it looked really great. And then I've got another one down here that started from seed last year. It was just really small and it made it through the winter and it is in the ground and it has been dug around. The armadillos have dug around it, but um, it survived and it looks really healthy and happy. So I'm just so thankful for that. Looking at the garden from this direction, you can see that I probably have way too many millet in here also, and because they're going to grow tall and um, kind of fluff out. So thankfully, I have them in pots and I can move them when I need to. So there are um, some advantages to uh, not being able to grow in the ground. And uh, also, you know, I change my mind a lot too. So it's, uh, it's really cool when I can just pick it up and plunk it somewhere else. Here's a surprise. The verbascum that I put in the pot looks like it's got a little bud on it right here. So, wow, yay, I need to put some more in pots. Now my millet's got that weird kind of, I guess it's, uh, I don't know if that's pollen or what. That one does. This is the stage of millet that I love the most because it's so fuzzy and cute and, uh, and it's so soft. I don't remember if I've mentioned how much I love the burgundy stems of this cut leaf cone flower. I've got this stand of it growing here and it is growing so happy and healthy and thick and it's just going to be covered in yellow flowers that the bees cannot resist and it's going to turn this area into a honey, honey scented wonderland. I've got the first bloom on my Maypop passion flower vine and these are the vines that have been growing in my front yard and when I just cut them back when they get spent and then later I pick them up and put them on little wire things because um, well just to get them up off the ground but isn't it isn't it lovely this is for Gulf fritillaries. I gotta show y'all this hydrangea look at it it's pink and blue and purple isn't it just so lovely? My other ones are different colors too, but not all like that one, but uh, it's so cool. I've got lace cap hydrangeas blooming, and when I first got these, they were a deep, deep purple. And then I made cuttings of them, and these are uh, hydrangeas that I've grown from cuttings out here in the back, and so the dirt must be very different here because I get um, pink and blue and purple also. I love the pink hydrangea with the salvia amistad behind it. Isn't that lovely? I've got another butterfly to release. It's probably going to go pretty fast because I don't really know how long. I know it wasn't in here this morning, but uh, let's see. Let's see if it's going to fly away. So magical. So it was flapping and flapping, and uh, this it's around six o'clock in the evening, and uh, I know this morning it wasn't there. So I don't know how many hours it's been in there. I just saw it. Isn't it lovely? So I'm gonna release him. Um, and put him on something cool. Let's see what I can find over here to put the butterfly on. It's been such a gorgeous day. I've been planting out a bunch of stuff. And I just came in and took a shower. And let's see. Let's put it on some penta because they love to drink out of penta. And that's why I love to have Penta in the garden. So I hope, oops, okay, well, that's all right. You can go to Salvia. All right. 
So look at that beauty. Yes, that's what it's all about, y'all. I'm back at Paddles from the Past and uh, they're having a little luncheon for Mother's Day. And so I've brought my mom and my mother-in-law up here and we are admiring this gorgeous flower bed that they have up front. Look, they have poppies growing here. And this gives me hope. Look at these gorgeous, gorgeous poppies. They are like four, five feet tall. And then they've got this Nicosia on it. It smells so good. We've been admiring these bachelor buttons with this uh, gorgeous larkspur behind it. And then there is a really interesting salvia. Look at how light blue it is. I really, really am gonna try to grow poppies again and larkspur from seed and just the pink and the purples is so, and the gray green of it too. That's the other thing that I like, especially about, you can see there's the gray green right here in these bachelor buttons. Y'all, I cannot stand it, I want it. Look at this gray green, okay, it's white and then the greenery is gray green and I guess I've never seen it before, but here it's got some purple purplish pink flowers and it says it's rose campion isn't that gorgeous oh so yeah um I'm, I'm about to buy all the things look at this they've got dahlias potted up here and um i don't recognize a lot of these names but i do know what emery paul is that is a really gorgeous one um and so you can just come in here and buy dahlias already growing. Yeah, me neither. Look at this giant stand of salvias right here. Just so lovely. And oh, oh, everything here. They've got one, they've got everything that you want. Our this is, I love it. Yeah. 
We're at Petals from the Past. Hello, this is my mom and mother-in-law. We're saying hello to you. Oh, from beautiful sunshine. We're simply day. having a good time. <laughs> I'm sitting under the shade of a tree and looking at the lily pond and just enjoying being in the cool breeze. This is a lovely place to take a little bit of a breather while you're shopping. Um, over here on this side, the native plants are on this side and we haven't been to see them yet. So uh, there are fruit trees back there. And uh, you know, I just think they have everything that I've ever wanted. Do you see how this plant is sparkling? Like it's got glitter on it. It is so gorgeous. I'm gonna get two of them because I've never seen it before. And look what it says. It says, it's a tea plant. Man, I can't read that because I don't have my glasses on. But it says that it's pineapple scented. It makes, the flowers make a vanilla flavored tea. And it needs, it's tender. It's a tender perennial. It needs uh, help in the frost. So, oh my goodness, y'all. Y'all, I'm getting two of them. Oh dear Lord, y'all, I just got the crap scared out of me. This is my nemesis. Like never, ever, like never plant this in the ground, ever. Apple mint, it scares me to death. I'm afraid of it right here in this container. We really racked up on plants and fruit. There were peaches and strawberries right across the street from um, Petals from the Past. So we have got trees and plants and flowers and fruit, and we're not gonna starve on the way home. I hope y'all that using my trusty microphone has made a huge difference in the sound. Um, it's funny because when I watch my videos like on my phone, I'm just like, oh, that is so loud. That is too loud. I turn the volume down. I don't want to hear myself. I don't want to hear myself. I don't want to look at myself either. So every time I've got the, the camera like um, on me, I just feel slightly panicked. But um, y'all, I hope y'all are having a wonderful time in your gardens. Um, it's just, it's been a gorgeous spring. I hope y'all have gotten rain. I hope y'all have gotten sun. I hope y'all have gotten warmth. And uh, I hope y'all have been having a blast. And uh, just God bless y'all. I can't wait to talk to y'all. And y'all, let's play outside. Thank y'all so much for watching. See you later.